why you should ditch your tactical folders. Now, of course, I don't necessarily mean this in whole, and obviously I'm not gonna be selling any of my awesome tactical or tactically inspired knives, but I wanted to do this video kind of as a follow-up to a video that I did previously uh, in the not so long past, kind of talking about why you're probably carrying the wrong knife. And in that video, I got a lot of criticism saying that basically I was just disrespectful or disrespecting a certain blade shape, the buoy. But I wanted to go a little bit further into this conversation. So jumping into the core of the original conversation, I wasn't necessarily trying to say that buoy knives are bad or that, you know, any one particular blade shape or brand in and of itself was bad. Unfortunately, that's how a lot of people interpreted that video, but essentially in the core of the conversation for why you're carrying the wrong knife or probably carrying the wrong knife is that a lot of people end up choosing a knife to carry solely based off of its, um, solely based off of its past, either past users, past you know uh, experiences such as the K-Bar being heavily used in World War II, and they let that kind of past history of a blade or the historic basis of that blade or blade shape or brand predicate the reason for the purchase of that knife. And that was where the ultimate issue lies. And I think that that still is a valid point. And this is still very true when it comes to tactical knives, because a lot of people purchase tactical knives, whether they are double-edged OTFs or daggers, or even some of these here, like the Strider, solely because they want to belong to a group or a mindset of people that are a specific type of way, either special forces, military, or want to be military. And I think in that way, there's nothing necessarily wrong with purchasing, owning, and collecting these knives. Like if you want to own or purchase any of these knives, go buy a K-Bar, go buy a Bowie. Lord knows I have all of the above, you know, but I think the reality is that if you are trying to purchase something like a Strider solely because you want to belong to the group, what can end up happening is that you end up choosing a knife or, or a blade style that isn't necessarily conducive to what your practical needs are. And so this is why I say that ditching tactical knives as a whole can actually be good for some people. And I brought out a couple examples, my personal favorite especially being the Spidey Chef. I really like this knife and while admittedly I don't EDC it every day, <coughs> and admittedly it may not be the best knife for every situation, I think that honestly, something like this Spidey Chef is a really gold standard for EDC because it has a very utilitarian edge to it that gives you more practical abilities. Something like this is going to be far better at processing food, breaking down packages, cutting open cardboard. And it's going to do it very well, especially when it comes to food prep. And not only that, being that this is LC200N steel, is going to be extremely rust resistant. So what that means for the everyday user is if say I whip this bad boy out, cut some cheese, cut up celery, um, or even let's say cut up an orange or uh, a lime or a lemon, I don't have to worry about cleaning this edge off super well because it's not going to corrode. The acidity from the orange, the lime, the, the lemon are not going to stain the steel. They're not going to corrode the steel. They're not going to lead to any negative repercussions. That being said, this is still a pocket friendly tool that I can have to process food if I need that quite frequently. In addition to that rust resistance is very handy if say you're someone who likes to go outside in the winter and snowboard or snow machine. Having something like this is gonna be far more practical than going with something like for instance, this guy here. And not necessarily saying that these two are worlds apart, they are both titanium frame locks, but at the same time too, once again, the rust resistance is going to be much higher with LC200N than it is any of these other steels, especially this, um, especially this S30V. Uh, you know, definitely way leagues better in rust resistance. Now, granted, there may be some edge retention differences and maybe S30V has a slight edge retention, you know, edge to it. But at the same time too, this will be far more practical for most situations uh, of actual practical real world things. And honestly, that is where I find myself truly going to something like the Spidey Chef. When I go snowboarding, uh, snow machining, um, when I, 
when I go snowboarding, when I go snow machining, this is the knife that I do genuinely put in my pocket or in a secure area so that I don't lose it. I don't take these other knives because once again, they're not as practical. But I think that a lot of people end up boxing themselves into a mindset where they feel the need to have something that has a type of history, reputation behind it. When in all reality, most of the time, these knives are just tools to be used by people. Regardless to what tool here, you're going to be, regardless to what tool here is present, it's going to be used for an application. And that application might be more tactical application or it might be a more urbane or common application. Like once again, cutting open an orange. So that is kind of why I think non-tactical knives like these guys here, the CRKT Pilar, the Spyderco Spidey Chef, and even something like a you know, Victorinox um, Farmer are far more practical choices. And once again, they don't have the reputation, the experience, the history, something like a Strider SMG, right? They aren't um, forged in combat or war. But once again, if you're not going into war, you're not going into combat, why do yourself the disservice of having a knife that might not be as practical or as useful as something like a Spidey Chef? So that's kind of the argument that I wanted to make here. And hopefully that kind of clarifies that, you know, I'm not trying to go after or say that you shouldn't own a buoy. And I think it's also worth mentioning too, that at no time am I trying to say that you shouldn't own a knife. Obviously that would be a asinine statement for me to make because I own all of these knives, right? I own a K-Bar buoy that I was so flagrantly dissing in that previous video. You know, I own these knives and I like owning them. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm definitely an unapologetic knife collector but at the same time too I know that I have certain knives for certain applications that I use in certain times so I would say guys try to I would say that it's my strong recommendation of course you do you at every time but it's my strong recommendation that you try to find knives that you know they may not have the strongest history or backing behind them they may not be world-renowned in any way but if they fit your needs truthfully, if they really do fit your needs and are applicable to your situation, choose those knives, go with them. They will serve you much better than their alternatives. And that is why you should ditch tactical knives. All right, guys, God bless, and I'm out.